from News Channel 15, winner of the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System Award for the nation's best community college TV station. You're watching News Channel 15 Tonight with Kyle Peach. This is News Channel 15 Tonight. Hi, good evening and thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good weekend and a good start to the work week. I'm Kyle Peach. Here's a look at what's going on. With drought-like conditions settling in across the region, all fire departments in Richland County have joined together to issue a no-burn advisory. Now, caution, that is not a burn ban, but the fire departments in Richland County say that caution is advised in attempting to burn any materials, including leaves, branches, or trash, until the advisory has been lifted. You should ensure that all burning activities are fully extinguished and supervised if you're conducting a controlled burn. Dry and windy conditions have increased the risk of uncontrollable fires. The fire departments in Richland County are, using, are urging caution until those conditions improve. Meanwhile, the Illinois Drought Monitor says that all of Southern Illinois is experiencing abnormally dry conditions. Well, most of Wabash and Lawrence counties are considered to be in a moderate drought at this point. There is rain likely later this week, and we'll have more on that in our weather forecast in just a couple of minutes. The Lawrence Allison Fire Protection District was called out twice over the weekend to a pair of incidents. WAKO reports they were dispatched to a rollover accident at Westport in eastern Lawrence County on Saturday. And then on Sunday, three units dealt with a gas leak on 19th Street in Lawrenceville. No other details into those incidents have been released. In area arrest reports, a Richland County man was arrested over the weekend in Lawrence County. State police say 33-year-old Nathan Turrentine of Alney was arrested on an outstanding warrant. Meanwhile, WRUL reports 39-year-old Alicia Pierce of Carmi was arrested Friday after a traffic stop at Oak and Fifth Streets. She's charged with DUI of alcohol and illegal transportation of alcohol. And Carmi police arrested 29-year-old Tamberlin Caps of Crossville Sunday after she allegedly unlawfully entered the vehicle of Jason Rocket and stole property. Both of those women were taken to the White County Jail. A plane crash landed, a plane crash landed in Jefferson County Friday morning. State police say the crash occurred around 8:20 on Friday morning on Interstate 64 at the 80 mile marker in Mount Vernon. State police say the plane experienced mechanical issues causing it to crash. It hit a guardrail. No injuries were reported. No more information was immediately available. From that shocking moment to another, as lightning, a light, lightning laden thunderstorm rolling straight through an out of control wildfire is captured on camera. Jeremy Roth with our Take a Look at This. The perfect storm. It's the only way to describe this chaotic collision of a fierce thunderstorm and a raging wildfire caught on camera in California. Larissa Gonzalez captured the moment along with video of the storm moving right through the towering line fire, which officials are struggling to contain and which has forced thousands to evacuate. Aside from the threat of incoming weather systems, experts say intense wildfires can sometimes create their own severe weather. As the combo of intense heat and enormous smoke plumes climb into the sky, it can create pyrocumulus or so-called fire clouds that, if fueled with enough heat, can generate their own rain and lightning. Another shocking lightning-related story, this one in historic Rome, where government officials say a lightning strike hit the ancient Arch of Constantine, knocking a chunk of stone from the storied structure. Eyewitnesses told news agencies they heard the strike and saw the debris fall while seeking shelter from the sudden intense storm. Officials were able to collect and protect the fallen fragments and are now assessing the damage, which happens to coincide with an already underway renovation of the 1,700-year-old Roman landmark. Okay, how's about we finish today with a little love from up above? And who doesn't love hot air balloons, am I right? This stunning time lapse captured the kickoff for the weekend long Great Reno Balloon Race, which kept eyes on the skies over Nevada. More than 150,000 people flocked to the annual event, which is basically the Lollapalooza of hot air balloons. Maybe we should just call it Lotta Balloonza. <laughs> I'm gonna get that trademarked. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. 
Cool scene there. Thanks, Jeremy. Coming up next, we've got a look at your weather forecast, shower and thunderstorm chances with a tropical system that will be moving through coming our way this week. We've got that and a look at a lot of scores from a busy weekend in sports. Stay with us. Get your new Ford at Steve Buckner Automotive. New 2024 Ford Edge with 0% for 60 months and Ford F-150s with 0% financing. Go to stevefaulknerautomotive.com. At Steve Faulkner Automotive, lease the 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee L for $4.59 per month and 2024 Ram Heavy Duty Trucks up to $11,000 off. See them all at stevefaulknerautomotive.com. At the First National Bank, we're proud to be a part of this community, serving you with dedication and a smile. Our team is here to support you, offering financial solutions to meet your needs. Whether saving for your future, financing your dreams, or managing your everyday banking, we're here to help. Thank you for choosing the First National Bank. And as proud supporters of our local teams. We wish you the best of luck this season. The First National Bank, your local bank, supporting our local athletes. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hi, my name is Ryland Robb. I am from Albion, Illinois, and I am a radio TV major here at Wabash Valley College. From uh, broadcasting all sorts of sports games to producing my own TV show and radio show, the hands-on experience is as much as you want to do with it. In terms of the program itself, I think it's really special. It's really like almost a little family in a way, and it's really been really nice being able to experience the things I have with people that genuinely appreciate it with me. Welcome back. Time to talk weather here tonight. We told you earlier that uh, drought is settling into parts of the area, but we may see some relief, some shower activity expected here later in the week, but toward the end of the week, nothing showing up on radar tonight. Let's take a look at numbers today. Our high temperature today, a pleasant 82 degrees, three degrees below the normal high for this time of year. 46 ties the record low for this date. So a chilly overnight last night. No rain in our gauge. Let's take a look at uh, the map here tonight. Not going to show you a whole lot. Uh, pretty clear out there tonight across the area. As we go out in time, though, you see the timestamp up there Tuesday uh, afternoon. Again, not much there, but you will start to see some clouds lifting to the area from the north. A tropical system expected to impact parts of Texas this week, and we are expected to see rain, shower, and thunderstorm chances from that tropical system sometime late into Thursday, especially Friday and Saturday, where we're seeing at least uh, maybe a good dousing of rain finally in our region. Let's paint the picture for you tonight. Overnight lows again very pleasant. Chilly at uh, some locations. Clear skies. Overnight lows right around that 50 degree mark for tonight. Then for tomorrow another warm one. Sunshine mid to upper 80s. High spot looks to be at Mount Carmel at 88 degrees. Then for your Tuesday night clear skies middle to upper 50s for the overnight lows. And then our extended forecast, actually first on Wednesday, probably the warmest day of the week. High temperatures near 90 degrees on Wednesday. And then we'll start to see that tropical system later in the week. Clear skies, overnight low tonight, we'll call for 51 degrees out there. Then for that extended outlook, Tuesday and Wednesday, sunshine. Could start with the sun on Thursday. Clouds will build in. Chance of showers coming in Thursday evening. Highs in the mid-80s. Shower and thunderstorm chances appear to be best on Friday, 75. And then the shower and thunderstorm chances continue into Saturday, 78. And some leftover tropical moisture will create shower chances for us Sunday and Monday as highs stay in the upper 70s and low 80s weather maker in here for the weekend it appears that's your forecast sports is next stay with us hello i'm andrea lull from robinson illinois for my first appointment i knew i chose the right orthopedic center the day of surgery went like planned registration went smooth pre-surgery and the nurse made me feel very comfortable i'm currently three months out of surgery i don't even feel like i had a total hip replacement but I am having a much better quality of life with my new hip. WGH, we're going home. You need to be mindful that when you're out, maybe doing a little tree pruning or shaping or kids climbing in the tree, building tree houses, whatever, look up, make sure there's no power lines in or near the area. And even 
after the storm or after a wind event or something like that where a limb may be falling, falling down or hanging in the tree, make sure to look and, and there's no utility lines near that. And if there is, call us. We'll come take care of it. We'll get that down. We'll get things cleared up. Welcome back. It's time now to talk sports. Let's recap a very busy weekend across the region. We begin with high school football and the Little Illini Conference scoreboard. It was Effingham getting past Mount Carmel at the Aces home opener, 26-22. Alney kicks a last-second field goal from 34 yards out to beat Mattoon at home. The Tigers are 2-0 with a 24-22 win. In the battle for Lawrence County, Red Hill beats Lawrenceville 23-7 on Saturday. Elsewhere, Paxton Buckley Loda beat Newton 42-7. Casey Westfield beat El Paso Gridley 28-14. Charleston over Paris 25-18. Shelbyville wins at Marshall 54-8. And Taylorville, Taylorville wins at Robinson 34-0. In the Black Diamond, Carmi comes from behind to beat Hamilton County 52-29. Fairfield gets by El Dorado 28-20. Flora beats CZR 27-24. Johnston City blanks Edwards County 56-0. And Cesar Valier picks up a forfeit win from Vienna. Here's a look at our football replay schedule for this week. It'll be Mount Carmel and Effingham game tonight at 7 and 11. The Carmi Hamilton County game from two will be Tuesday night at 7 and 11. And then it's the replay of the Fairfield El Dorado game for you Wednesday at 7 and 11 right here on News Channel 15. High school volleyball from the weekend. It was a busy one at Olney. The Olney Invitational, Newton goes undefeated. They beat Edwards County 2-1, Arthur Lovington 2-0, Mount Zion 2-0, St. Anthony 2-1, and Newton 2-1. Meanwhile, I guess Newton didn't beat themselves there, did they? Fairfield beats Mount Carmel 2-0, Fairfield beat Hinsdale South 2-0, they beat St. Anthony 2-0, Arthur Lovington 2-0, and then lost to Newton 2-1. So it was Newton that beat Fairfield there in that last one. At the, um, after that to Fairfield loss, Mount Carmel then lost to Hensdale South 2-0. The Aces lost to Mount Zion 2-1, beat Alney's B team 2-0, and beat the Alney A team 2-0. The Aces' Sarah McCorkle gets her 1,000th career assist at that tournament. Edwards County lost to Newton 2-1, beat Mount Zion 2-1, lost to Hensdale South 2-1, beat Tolono Unity 2-1, and beat Hudsonville Palestine 2-0. And the other available score, Alney also falls to Tolono Unity 2-1. High school soccer from the weekend, Mount Carmel lost to Massac County 6-0. The Aces will play at Riverview Stadium tomorrow in their home opener against Robinson. Meanwhile, Alney lost to Altamont 2-1, and Newton beats Charleston 6-2. At the boys' golf, Alney invite on Friday at the Richland Country Club. Effingham St. Anthony took first place with a 297, Alney second at 336, Lawrenceville Red Hill third at 337, T-Town fourth at 338, Mount Carmel was fifth at 342, Newton finished seventh at 362, Carmi was 8th at 367, Flora 11th at 400, Fairfield was 12th at 403, 14 teams taking part in that one. And let's move on to junior college volleyball from the weekend. Wabash Valley goes 1-3 at the Vincennes Tournament. The Lady Warriors down Pratt College 3-0 but lost to Ellsworth 3-1 to Eastern Florida State 3-0 and Mineral Area 3-0. Frontier went 0-4 at the East Central Tournament, falling to East Central John Wood Metro, uh, Metropo Let's try that again. Metropolitan College and Southeastern Illinois. They lose all four of those by 3-0 scores. That'll do it for us tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow for more news, weather, and sports. Live Mount Carmel High School volleyball for you tonight on the NFHS Network. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night. News Channel 15, winner of the Intercollegiate Broadcasting System Award for the nation's best community college TV station.